welcome back to Talking Dragon Age, the show where I talk about Dragon Age. Today we're discussing one of the oldest mysteries in the franchise, the Brazilian forest and the ruins therein. I made the video for werewolves before this, so we can get all the Zathrian stuff explained so we don't have to worry about that. But the Lady of the Forest is worth talking about. Talking to Zathrian, Serral, uh, the Grand Oak, and the Lady herself, it appears she was part of the forest before Zathrian came along and bound her to the wolf. Take this from the World of Thetis Volume 2 that explains it pretty well. He manipulated the heart of the forest, itself possessed of an ancient spirit. Zathrian bound the spirit, the lady, to a wolf and bade her kill for him. If you're wondering how a single spirit can possess the entire forest, that's not exactly how it works, I think. Like, possession isn't the right word. It actually reminds me of the Avar philosophy where you got the Lady of the Skies, Court the Mountain Father, and so on. She wasn't even aware of her own nature until Zathrian bound her to the wolf. Whether she just watched over the forest from the Fade or whatever isn't super important, because the veil is already super thin in the Brazilian forest. So let me know how you guys interpret this. The forest had a spirit of its own from back when its first seeds were sown. Perhaps she died of grief that day, or perhaps she simply went away. Or perhaps the wares are the ones to blame, for the day she left is the day they came. In the center of the forest the wares do dwell, or so go the tales my fellows tell, but they cannot be followed there. The forest doth protect the wares. Perhaps wares use magic to command the trees. All I know is they move as they please. One last warning. The forest is like a thing alive. It changes as it wills, closing paths behind you and opening up new ones. Too many have become lost within, unable to find their way out. Were I you, I would endeavor not to make the forest my enemy. She is the powerful spirit of this ancient forest that I summoned long ago and bound in the body of the wolf. Her nature is that of the forest itself. Beautiful and terrible, serene and savage, maiden and beast. She is the lady and Witherfang both, two sides of a single being. You are my maker, Zathrian. You gave me form and consciousness where none existed. I have known pain and love, hope and fear, all the joy that is life. The lady has some level of control over the forest. She is intrinsically connected to it. That's all I can say for certain. So now I want to talk about the forest's history. Many, many battles have been fought here, most of them largely forgotten by history. But not by the forest. Sorry, that just sounded really cool. I couldn't resist. Uh, these battles include human tribes fighting each other, uh, tribes fighting Tevinter, tribes fighting elves, elves fighting Tevinter, and probably more. One tale in particular stands out as weird to me. Master Island says how their clan was one of the first to leave the Dales, and his father took part in an attack against a human clan tribe, insisting they were barbarians without honor. What's weird to me is that puts him or his father at a few hundred years old. The clan became the nation of Ferelden after Kallen had united them in the Exalted Age. So Island's father lived before that. In other words, Island is full of shit. I'm sure that surprises no one. There's also a mistake where Tamlin asks the Dalish Warden if they were supposed to be helping Master Verithorn, who is in a totally different clan. In any event, all the battles here have left the Vale super weak. That's why there are so many Sylvans, and even the Sloth Demon behind the Grand Oak. Not to mention the forest shifting and changing a lot, but that may or may not always be tied to the Lady of the Forest. But now let's talk about the ruins. Oh boy, the ruins. Okay, let's start with the ruins from the Dalish Elf origin. There are a few reasons they are probably human. First, we have Tamlin saying the ruins look more human than Elven. Then Merrill comes in and says it's definitely human architecture, but there are elven artifacts around. Of course, we take all that with a grain of salt, but there are two more indicators. 
One, it's the same architecture as Ostagar, which was definitely a human fortress. Again, take that with a grain of salt, it could just be reused assets. But two, the presence inside the phylactery in the werewolf ruins confirms the humans built the place. That does not necessarily mean the humans also built the Dalish elf origin ruins, but it does lend support to that claim. Now, Merrill notes elven artifacts lying around. I suppose they're invisible. But then we find a statue of an elven god. Alright, this is about to get complicated, so try to stay with me. So we have this statue said to depict Fallon Din. We find a similar statue in the architect's lair in Awakening. This statue matches concept art for what the archdemon was originally going to look like. Now, there is debate in-world over whether or not the old gods had forms besides the dragons. If this is Urthemiel, it makes sense the architect would have it, both because he was the high priest and because a lot of his research is associated with Urthemiel. You'll notice both of these figures have wings. The only other statue I can think of with a humanoid with wings is Mithal. Read into all this as you will. Point is, these statues are similar. They may relate to the old gods, the Evanurus, both or neither. It's worth pointing out that both statues bear striking similarity to this figure in DA2 concept art for the Deep Roads, just without the wings. The headdress looks super similar to Urthemiel's symbol, but I can't find a source for this symbol. Also, this guy has tentacles, which reminds me of the DA4 concept art currently out. I'm getting off topic. So anyway, we also have the Alluvian. Couple of things. First, Tevinter used Alluvians for communication across long distances, but couldn't use them for travel. Second, this particular Alluvian is tainted. When Tamlin touches it, it releases the blight within. Tamlin says he sees a city. It's been long theorized this is the Black City, but I say it's equally likely it's a Dwarven Tag. Especially since he says he thinks it's underground. But that could also just be a lack of light or something. In any event, I lean towards Dwarven Tig overrun by Darkspawn and the Taint. Get your minds out of the gutter. So a human, probably to Vinter Ruin in the Priscillian Forest, filled with elven artifacts. We learn in the Werewolf Ruin that elves and humans live together down there. I'll come back to that. Uh, and it stands to reason the same was true here, elves and humans living together in some capacity. The game calls the area Elven Ruins, but whatever. My theory is this place was a laboratory studying elven artifacts. Any elves here might have been slaves, or else they too were trying to get these things to work. These would have been relatively recent descendants of the elves that survived the veil coming down, so of course they would be desperate for anything that could help them make their magic work again. That's been done with technology in sci-fi and post-apocalypse stories. It's really cool to see that done with fantasy. I hope they explore this more. So the werewolf lair, this ruin is way bigger. Or at least, if the other one was also big, the other areas were inaccessible by rubble and overgrowth and whatnot. But yeah, it's kind of amazing how big this ruin actually is. I didn't really notice it until I started making this video, but this place is ginormous. It might be the biggest ruin we explore in all of Dragon Age, not counting the deep roads or ancient tigs. The presence in the phylactery says humans built the place, but elves lived there too. It does not appear that these elves were slaves based on what the presence in the vial shows us, but more significantly, it has a tomb, a burial chamber. This is where things get weird. We know elves bury the dead while humans cremate them. However, this practice rose to prominence with the Chantry, so humans before the First Blight probably had different practices based on region. It's totally plausible that there are ancient human tombs. But the ritual to open the door is depicted on an elven tablet. But if they were all working together, it's possible the elves made the tablet, but humans made the ritual. With generic prayers and whatnot we've seen Tevinter use elsewhere. However, the ghosts in the ruin are speaking clear elvish. So that says to me this chamber was for the elven dead. But, there are these statues around which we know are Alamari in origin. 
This could be another thing of the lore telling us one thing and the gameplay showing us something different. But this is part of the game. This is set in stone. But anyway, the sarcophagus in the center, clearly prominent, contains the breastplate of the Juggernaut armor. This is significant because the Juggernaut armor was created by and for Tevinter forces, who fell to infighting while campaigning against the claim. According to legend, which is documented as folklore, so take it with a grain of salt, the Magister in charge separated the armor onto himself and three lieutenants, and then summoned bound revenants to hide and protect them. The clan sacked the outpost they were at, but never found the armor. Given we fight the revenants and reassemble the armor set, we know this is at least partially true. But the breastplate... That's found in the burial chamber, clearly four elves, inside a giant structure where both humans and elves lived. My theory is whoever lived here found the breastplate, fought the revenant associated with it, but never got the rest of the armor. It would explain why we don't fight a revenant for the breastplate like we do the other pieces. But still, this ruin shows a level of cooperation and cultural understanding between the elves and humans we haven't really seen elsewhere. Which is good. It shows that not all of Tevinter, or whoever was here, were all just imperialist slavers obsessed with power. It could be as simple as the folk here not being complete dickheads. They still took the land from the clan, but you know. But if the clan won that battle and beat Tevinter, then... Eh. It's worth noting there are other sarcophagi in the ruin too, not just the burial chamber. Now I want to talk about the sunburst symbol. It became the symbol of the Chantry, but it probably existed before that. We see that all the time in reality. I bring it up because there are several dioceses throughout the ruin that bear similarity. And more prominent, the sunburst symbol appears on these, uh, things that this arcane horror teleports between. What are these things? They're not summoning circles. Spiritual cages? They're not very effective. It feels like they work for the horror, not to contain it. Anyway, it's interesting that the sunburst symbol is here. Maybe it originally had something to do with Elgernon, the eldest of the sun? Who knows. But there's other interesting stuff. On this table up the stairs, there is what appears to be science stuff. There's a skull with, I think, a brain? There's a frog here, pinned up for some reason. Lots of books and papers. There's this, uh... Uh... So what was going on here? The werewolves aren't using this stuff, the lady isn't using it. Which means it must be left over from whoever lived here like a thousand years ago or so. The lady used the forest to keep people out, so I'm not surprised no one ever found this place after she moved in. But still... This place is old. It most likely predates Andraste. Because she started uniting the Alamari and Ferelden, uh, kicking out Devinter, then moving on and picking up rebels from the rest of the world. Devinter's presence in Ferelden wasn't that great to begin with. We could argue the ruins aren't Devinter, rather clean or other Alamari, but that doesn't explain the presence in the vial. I talked earlier about how the Dalish fought humans in the forest after the Exalted March of the Dales. Maybe they moved into this place? Along with humans? No, this isn't adding up. Okay, timeline. Kalanhad unites the clan in the Exalted Age, founding the nation of Ferelden. Before that, the Dalish clans fought the clan in the Brasilian forest. Either around or even before this time, the Lady of the Forest makes it her domain. Zathrian didn't bind her to the wolf until much later. Before the Dalish, the clan slash Andraste fought Tevinter for the land. Tevinter wouldn't have been here after Andraste, unless it was in secret, which is totally plausible, but I can't imagine they built the place in secret. Again, it's huge. So the battles, possibly involving the Juggernaut armor, have to have taken place after the ruins were built. The presence recalls humans and elves living there. We can deduce it was probably a mutually beneficial arrangement, as I explained earlier. 
Then they fought together against what the presence only recalls as shadowy figures. It's perfectly possible this was the first blight. However, the presence's memory has faded significantly, and they may have just been normal invaders. I think that about does it for the Priscillian Forest. There are still a lot of unanswered questions, but I kind of like that. So let's attempt a recap. So, uh, once upon a time, there was a forest. There were elves there, and then there were humans, and they fought, and the humans won and built stuff. But then the humans fought each other, and the veil got wonky, so spirits wandered in. And the humans kept fighting, then some more elves showed up, and now there's a forest. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like, and remember, Tala Nadas.